Hello everyone. Welcome into Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah presents me, Deborah, with another edition of Crochet from the Beginning. And sometimes you'll hear people say, well, I don't have what I need to crochet. Here's what you should have. What you really only need is a hook and yarn. Technically speaking, you could do all kinds of crochet with that. But sometimes you have to cut the yarn. I've got my fancy schmancy uh, stationary scissors from Walmart. They come with an eraser on the top. They're put out by Fiskars. Not sponsored by anybody or anything. These are just what I use and I kind of like them. And they're kind of pink, a pinky purple, kind of magenta. I like that too. And something else that's really good to have. Oh, this little container, by the way, in case you're wondering. I got those from the Dollar Tree at some point. Um, they come in a pack of four. Yeah. A lot of people don't like these, but I use them because, well, they're cheap and they're lightweight. And these are, you have to have some kind of a needle to weave in your ends, unless you just want them dangling. But hey, eventually you'll want to weave in your ends. And then these little guys. Why do I need these? They're stitch markers, right? Technically speaking, no. You can do without them. You can use a paper clip. You can use a piece of yarn as a stitch marker, but these little guys are handy, okay? They snap closed, they open up, they look kind of like uh, diaper pins of old. Um, some of us are old enough to remember when those were the norm, but yeah, I bought mine um, where I got my hooks to from Wish. Again, not sponsored, I just happened to buy some stuff from there. Um, not only do people use stitch markers to mark where they're decreasing and doing funky things that are way too advanced for me. But also, I use these suckers when I have to put my work down. Here's what I mean. I don't know about at your house, but nothing ever happens without interruption here. There's always something that the cat wants to do and get into my stuff, or the phone rings, or something happens. So here, I'm gonna start off like I did on the, the first one there. We're gonna start off with a slip knot. Tighten that up around, blah, blah, blah. If you wanna see how to do the slip knot and have really step-by-step, step, you can go back to the first video. They're always there for you. I'm just gonna chain some here. We're gonna chain one, two. This is really awkward to do in the frame of the camera, just so you know. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, yeah, I just chained ten, right? Something we do all day long. But what if I actually had to chain a chain hundred? Do you think that I can get through a hundred of these without losing my count or setting it down and having to go do something. Let me show you what I do. And I usually do it for every 20, but since this is a decent stopping point, I'll take out, pull my hook loose a little bit so it's out of my way. And I will usually go to the side. And I know that this is my 10th stitch right here because we don't count the loop that's on the hook. I mark it with a stitch marker. Because if I have to chain a lot, like I'm doing a long blanket or I'm doing, you know, a scarf or something like that, that maybe I have to chain 64, I might mark it every 10 or I might mark it every 20, but I keep it consistent throughout so that I know I lose my count. I can go, okay, I was at 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. That's a lot easier to do than counting every single one of these over and over again. Now, if you have a mind like a steel trap and you can keep up with where you are, good on you. I don't. <laughs> I forget things all the time, but that is just a huge help for stitch markers for me. Another way to use a stitch marker, uh, let's go back through, let's do some single crochets into my back bump there. Actually, that was not for a single, since I haven't shown those other ones yet, I'm not going to do that single crochet, yarn over, pull through if you don't drop the yarn off your hook because you're trying to do it through a viewfinder. There we go. The first row is always kind of hard for me anyway because it's, it's, there's not enough there to hold on to. Okay. I got another stitch. I'm just single crocheting across these. 
yarn over and pull through those two and oh no the phone rings and I have to get up and I know that if I set this down it's going to be too much of a temptation for my cat to not grab this hook and knock it down or for me as clumsy as I am not to knock it down so what I do is pull out a little bit of yarn there on your loop and I will take a stitch marker and put it through and clip it that way even if the hook falls out of your work which it's going to or somebody grabs it your stitches are not pulling out so maybe not a stitch marker but a stitch holder it's a it's a cat destruction preventive device for the stitches that you're working on right now at least that's how I look at it and that's it stitch markers can be your friend uh, later on when we talk about crocheting in the round and keeping counts and having to change stitches they can be super handy these are inexpensive to buy and the way I refer to them is handy AF okay if you want to know what AF means look it up because I'm not telling you on this video but they're handy and I keep them in my little tiny Dollar Tree box right there snap shut and I'll even toss this in my go bag with me or usually in my notions bag in my go bag but for now I'm not actually making anything with this and we will talk about some other stitches in another video thanks for coming by for crochet from the beginning with me Deborah and hopefully I will see you soon hit me a like uh, on your way out if this helped you in any way whatsoever and um, I'd love it if you would subscribe on your way out as well Thanks a bunch, y'all. Bye now.